All right, what's up, recruits? This is a Warframe showcase of a build I have decided to make finally after spending forever trying to figure out how I wanted to do it. I decided to make a melee vault build. I know, original, right, everybody? Fucking original, 2024, and, I, and people still making these builds? Yeah. But it's not even that expensive. It's actually pretty cheap. Fuck, you don't even need these shards. These shards were just for other builds. So, the build will revolve around whatever melee weapon you prefer to use. Fuck, you use Grand Prime, Hay, Dorklov, Reaper, Pangolin, Desticle, Hell, Helio Core works. Uh, Dual Licker, Redeemer, Skijati, Parasesis. I, I, I don't think I'd work with this. But I'm going to show off the hate. So, the hate build that I am using is... It varies. You can swap this out with you know, Morgan Shed if you want, but quite literally, uh, that change does nothing really. Oh, wow. Point two. Yippee. Uh, either way... Go back into the number... Why, why is that so much lower? I don't know. Either way, the build is quite simple. It just uses the basic Reaping Spiral, but you don't even have to worry about any of these combos, because the only combo you're going to be doing is... That one. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> That's it. You can block if you want, but the Incarnate doesn't work with it. You'll be running Conditional Overload, Blood Rush, Voltaic Strike, Virulent Scourge, Malcolm Organ Shatter, or Normal Organ Shatter, Quickening, Gladiator Might, and Sacrificial Steel. These will be your stats. Now you may be wondering, why the hell is he running Corrosive? Also, Junior's Wrath. This is very useful. Why is he running Melee Influence? Well, that's where the Vault build will come in. But uh, I accidentally have left the Simulacrum, <laughs> which is uh, my fault, so I gotta go back to it real quick. Hold one moment. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, let's show off the Volt build. Now, there are two builds. I'm only showing off the melee build because I do have a, uh, I do have a support build. This is literally for support. It just wipes shit off the fucking field. Either way, Nourish plus Shock Trooper. Now you're wondering, oh, now we know why he's running that melee arcane. We'll be running Steel Charge, Archon Stretch for the occasional energy you'll get. <laughs> Narrow minded for the duration. Adaptation because, um, uh, uh, I don't like Willing Guard. <laughs> Prime Flow for Energy. I know my mods aren't maxed. Bite me. Umbral Intensify. Shock Trooper. Phenomenal mod. You'll know why. Archon Continuity. Because I'm poor and don't have Prime Continuity. They are the same thing. And Blind Range for the damage. As you can see, Shock Trooper hits 249% extra damage with not even a little bit of Molt Augmented acquired and or can energize just for the energy pickups. I just use Speed Multipliers 2.87x with no Augment applied. And your shield lasts for... 60 seconds and nourish you get a 186 percent damage increase with viral meaning you don't have to run viral on your weapon now the hate incarnon it is quite nice Incarn evolution you get plus 100 percent melee damage sprint speed and parkour velocity once you reach time six now whenever it comes to evolution two you get two options you get swordsman's flourish which increases damage by 30 and gives you 100 percent combo count chance or stalker's legacy which gives you plus 30 damage combo if you really like dread and despair run it otherwise just just run swordsman flourish Next, you have Evolution 3. You get the options of Resolute Force for combo duration, 10 seconds. You get Swift Break, which gives you plus 6% heavy attack wind-up speed. And then there's also plus 0 0.8 range. If you really need the combo duration, go for it. Otherwise, go for working range, because Swift Break is useless. Finally, when it comes to Evolution 4, you are given four options. Four options, three options, sorry. You get increased hero chance by 10%. You get Absolute Domination with your status by 20%. And then you get one that does plus 6 and plus 10. Critical chance and status chance, respectively. When it comes to the build you'll be using, if you're going to be doing heavies, you're going to use crit. If you're going specifically for status, you'll obviously do this one. But if you're going for light attacks like the build suggests, because that's how the incarnate functions, you shoot out blades that do heat damage when you're neutral, you'll be going for subtle force. Now, just to recap on the build, Reaping Spiral, Dreamer's Wrath, all these mods are easy to come, in, come by. This, you can buy the bundle for 100 platinum, or go farm it if you really do not want to spend the platinum. Uh, when it comes to acquiring that mod, Ow, my lip. Uh, you'll be doing Alchemy's tier 6 rotation specifically. It has a 6% chance of dropping. When it comes to those, you can also change them out for any of these. You could run uh, Discipline's Merit if you really want. You could run... Not that one, but if you only have that one, run that one. You can run Master's Edge for the increased Tenokai damage, and you could run Opportunities Reach for the increased Reach with it. So, let's show off the build. Uh, let's go ahead and pick... I haven't scanned any of y'all? Damn. Corrupted, uh, corrupt heavy gunners. We're going to steel path, and we're going to pause the AI. And why, why quit deleting them all? <laughs> That's the one downside of this. I'm not going to have any stacks or anything. It's just going to be uh, the gun itself. I don't even prime anybody. Oh, I don't have any energy. Maybe we'll shock trooper. We'll pop a shield usually. We'll do this if I could aim. Now, one thing you would end up doing, not what I just did there, you would wait for the Tenokai, you'd run the, uh, 
What is it called? You'd run that one school that gives you the ability to like dodge and they all clump together. But I don't have them on watch. But as you see, I didn't struggle at all to kill any of those. Hell, I could even un unpause the AI. Why is the enemy level not maxed? Get confused about that. Do this, do that, and then go crazy again. Oh yeah, that's one downside. If you don't run prime sure footed, that's gonna happen to you a lot. Yep, yeah, see. That's the only downside of this, but usually they die quicker than that. As you can see, no struggle. Other than getting knocked in my butt a couple times, but no struggle at all. And thanks to the Incarnon, I can attack from a range and still take advantage of the fact that melee exposure works. Not exposure, sorry. Melee, which one is this? I keep forgetting the name of it. The same way melee influence works on melee electricity, you get a 20% chance to apply all your status effects within 18 meters. And as you see, it's quite useful when everybody just explodes. I'm trying to get rid of the combat buff, but it isn't going away. But once again, I will just show you in a circumstance that is most optimal. Granted, most people will end up running... Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know the focus tree that it has it in. You do this, you shock trooper yourself, speed, shield, watch your melee weapon, and go absolutely crazy. Carnon's active, you whack it, now you kill. And every time you see your Tenokai thing, go for it. No issues whatsoever. And you're, like most people in the Warframe you're like, if you're like this, I don't personally like people who do this, but if you don't instantly kill it, most people will be upset with you. I see it as, as long as your time to kill is reasonable and you don't sit there whacking at something for a year and a quarter to kill it, go crazy. As you can see, I'm not taking that long to kill everything. Usually not everything is this spread apart either, but it is re it is really good damage. See? And with Tenokai constantly being active, you won't lose your combo counter as long as you know when to uh, hit your heavy button, obviously. Now, it, you could do this, obviously, which is what I usually do whenever I'm from afar. But sadly, this combo doesn't work. If it did, that'd be really cool, but it sadly doesn't. But you can do this. It's just depending on what you want to use. So once again, I will show the build. I would show in, uh, out in the mission type, but it's going to be the same thing I'm showing you here in the single locker room. You're just going to end up slaughtering everything as long as you can pay attention to your Tenakai counter. But once again, this can work with any weapon. I'm just showing it off with the hate. There's my hate build. If I had a ribbon, I'd obviously replace it. This is basically poor boy's best chance of doing it. But you could also change out melee influence at any point in time for melee duplication if you want. Let me dump that. Uh, hell, melee animosity if you really want. Melee exposure if you don't have, uh, if you don't want to run corrosive, this is useful. Melee retaliation if uh, you have a ton of shields. Melee fortification if you want the armor. Melee vortex if you run, uh, I guess, magnetic for some reason. And pull the enemies in, it's really useful, but I don't see the point in running magnetic. It is good, but I personally won't run it. But yeah. And then finally, the Volt build, one more time. Still charge, coming drift, all these, if you really want. You could indeed, yeah, I just got it. This is a new account. Uh, you could replace it with coming drift, obviously, but I like it for the increased range because uh, you are sacrificing range. Thanks to be reminded. Again, you do not need these shards. These were for the other build. Well, hope you guys enjoyed trying out this build. Have a great rest of your day.